Hello seafarers, welcome to my YouTube channel Sailor School. In this video, I will be talking about structures and hazards of a Roro ship. This is a part 2 continuation of the part 1 video which was uploaded uh, earlier. The topics which I will be discussing in this video are uh, construction of ramps, bow visor and internal ramps and I'll be discussing about care and maintenance of RAMs and obviously I have added some uh, oral exam questions from the past 4 years these questions were regularly asked in most of the MMBDs so I rounded off the common ones and I have explained questions and answers in this video and we'll be looking about two particular case studies of Roro ships which led to major changes in terms of construction of a Roro ship and finally I will be talking about hazards and dangers of a Roro ship. So first let me start by explaining you what are rams. Rams are nothing but large steel construction which are longitudinal beams uniformly spaced one after the other and they are plated over which means the plates are welded to the series of longitudinal beams which are uniformly laid one after the other. This is done for construction of a ramp. The main purpose of this ramp is to provide a vehicle roadway. All ramps are fitted with anti-skid and steel grips. External ramps like stern ramp, side ramp and bow ramps are used to allow wheeled vehicles to travel between jetty and inside Roro ship. So ramps are basically of two types. One is the external ramp and another is the internal ramps. Under external ramps we have stern ramp, side ramp, bow ramp and quarter ramp. Please note that ramps also serve as watertight door when it is folded in its closed position. Ramps are operated by a twin hydraulic cylinder action or by winch arrangements in which wire ropes are used. Now I will be talking about two special type of ramps which are located at the stern part of the ship. These ramps are common nowadays. They are stern quarter ramp and sliving ramp. Stern quarter ramp is an angled ramp which is offset by an angle of 30 degree to 45 degree from the center line of the ship. Means the ramp is positioned in such a way that from the center line of the ship it is offset by 30 to 45 degree. That is a fixed position of the stern quarter ramp. When we talk about sleeving ramp, sleeving ramp is a stern ramp that can be set to an appropriate angle about 40 degree from the center line on either side. So sleeving ramp can be positioned on either side either on the port side or on the starboard side. The advantage of sleeving ramp is that ship can be moved to jetty at any side. So this will not disturb the lo loading discharging operation. Now we shall move on to internal ramps. Internal ramps are of two types, fixed or movable internal ramps. The main purpose of internal ramps is to provide access from deck to deck for distribution of cars. On a Roro ship they can be typically from 8 to 15 decks. So the purpose of internal ramp is to provide access to all these decks which will help in distribution of cars, trailers inside the ship. Internal ramps are operated with the help of hydraulic power. Some internal ramps are fixed in their position whereas the movable internal ramps are operated with the help of hydraulic power. Just like stern quarter ramp or sleeving ramp, there is a typical internal ramp which is known as tilt-table ramp. Tilt-table ramp is a single section internal ramp. It is provided with flaps and this ramp has hinges 
on its both sides. In this diagram you can notice there are two hinges. When the ramp is in closed position then it acts as a complete deck. This ramp can be opened either on this side or the other side. Either of the hinges can be secured and the other side of the ramps can be lowered to the deck. The raising and lowering of this ramp is done by wire winch system. Now let me explain about care and maintenance of ramps. Most of the vessels will have OMM which is Onboard Operations and Maintenance Manual or commonly it is known as PMS Manual in some of the ships. In this manual there is procedures for all operation of critical equipments. When I am talking about RORO the operation of ramps or bow visor is explained in this manual. This OMM manual also explains the procedures for care and maintenance of ramps. In a ramp we must check the seals or sealing arrangement and do the chalk test monthly in order to check its weather tight integrity. The locking cleats, pins, hinges, wire ropes and all other moving parts must be inspected and greased frequently. Any salt deposits on the ramp or on the cleats must be cleaned to prevent it from getting rusted. The hydraulic piping and the flexible hoses must be inspected for any leakage or deterioration. All hydraulic hoses must be safe and secure from chaffing and they must be inspected prior operating the ramp. In ramps there will be some sensors, limit switches and proximity switches. All these must be inspected for their operation in regular intervals. The drainage system between the bow door and the collision bulkhead must be inspected and it must be free of any debris. The indicators for ramps opened or closed position and the level alarms on bridge must be tested. In this video you can observe the stern ramp is in two parts and it is hinged in between and it is folded inwards with the help of winches, wires and when you closely observe in this video the hydraulic jacks present on the ramp which are pushing the ramp as well as the wire ropes help in unfolding the ramp into one single straight piece and then it is laid on the jetty. When any external ramp is in its closed position you can observe the cleats which are hydraulically powered means there are some hydraulic locks which helps in locking the ramp so that to provide watertight integrity to the ship. And you can observe the pockets for cleats to be attached in this video. So now I will be telling about the oral questions which are usually asked regarding the Roro ships. The first one is what to do if the jetty is more far from the ramp or at a height which is above the accessible level of the ramp. This is one of the question which is asked by MMD survivor. The answer for this question is when the Roro vessels are made fast to the shore or to the berth which has considerable height differences. So with considerable height differences obviously require longer ramps. So in order to avoid stowage problems of these long ramps foldable stern ramps are used. Foldable stern ramps or doors are nothing but one single ramp is divided into two sections which are made fast together with the help of hinges and they are provided with outer and inner flaps which allows smooth transition of vehicles. Outer or inner flaps are nothing but some small steel covers which are laid on the exact point of hinges so that 
when the vehicles pass over this the hinges or any grease present on the hinges will not affect the vehicle about this i have marked in the video which was shown earlier okay question number 2 how is the watertight integrity maintained with such large openings means on roro ships when the ramp is opened or bow door is opened it is a very large opening in such case how come the water tight integrity of the roro vessel is maintained this is the question so answer for this question is when any ramp or door is in its closed position the inner section of the ramp acts as an watertight door because this door is secured by hydraulically operated cleats and locking devices normally they have two hydraulic side locks two manual side locks and a bottom lock which is also known as atlantic lock the watertight integrity in such large ramps or doors is achieved with the help of hydraulic pressure cleating in addition with hard rubber seals and hinge arrangements which are positioned above the water line means when the hydraulic pressure cleating pulls the ramp closer the hard rubber seals which acts like a cushion so this helps in water tight integrity the similar can be noted in hatch covers in bulk carriers question number 3 what is bow visor in roro ships and why the bow visor is rare or has become extinct to find in present day roro ships the answer for this question is bow ramps are used on roro ships and ferries to unload vehicles and bow ramps helps in permitting drive through capability inside the ship bow ramp is nothing but a axial ramp which links ship to the jetty through a bow opening this bow opening is a visor or a side hinged bow door visor means it lifts in upper direction side hinged bow door means it is a door which is locked in center it just opens like a normal door horizontally on sea going vessels there are inner bow doors or collision bulkhead doors behind the loading ramp these doors act as a secondary barrier against the water entering the car deck in this video you can see the visor is lifted up and the bow ramp which is folded into two parts is extended by unfolding it slowly again it is secured inside the ship so now in this second video this is some vessel of stena company in this you can observe what i meant by side hinged bow door in this video you can observe the door is opened on both the sides and you can also observe the hydraulic locking system or hydraulic cleats in this doors clearly and as soon as the door opens the ramp which is folded into two parts acts like a secondary barrier and prevents water from entering car deck and you can see the ramp is lowered with the help of wire winch mechanism and once the ramp is lowered you can see the secondary barrier or inner bow door this bow door acts like a secondary barrier and prevents water from entering the car deck so this inner bow door must also be opened then only it is possible for the vehicles to be unloaded or loaded through the bow door so question number 4 at what angle must the ramps be secured to the quay or be placed on the quay this questions means nothing but the angle made by the ramp when it is in contact with the jetty what is the minimum angle requirement for this ramp the answer for question number 4 is the minimum slope angle required for the shore ramp or the internal ramps between decks must be kept below 8 to 9 degrees means anything lesser than 8 degrees is good for loading and unloading of roro cargo
ओके नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज द रिक्वायरमेंट्स फॉर क्लासिफिकेशन सोसाइटी इन केस ऑफ रैम्स इन दिस टॉपिक देर आर सम बेसिक पॉइंट्स विच आर नोटेड बाय द क्लास सर्वायर व्हेन ही कम्स फॉर इंस्पेक्शन ऑफ रैम्स इन रोरो शिप द क्लास सर्वायर इंस्पेक्ट्स द हिंज अरेंजमेंट एट टॉप एंड बॉटम ऑफ द रैम्प नंबर ऑफ रैम सेक्शंस एंड हिंजेस विद इन द स्ट्रक्चर मैक्सिमम एंड मिनिमम ऑपरेटिंग एंगल्स ऑफ द रैम water tight ceiling arrangements of the ramp operational lifting arrangements of the ramp cleating and locking arrangements so most of these topics i have already showed you in the videos so you can understand what are the typical parts of a ramp and how the ramps are constructed what are the purpose of the ramp and what is the care and maintenance done in ramps all these topics we have covered so now moving on to the case studies The first case study is of MS Estonia. The MS Estonia is a Roro ferry which sank on 28 September 1994. Now I will talk about how MS Estonia sank, under what weather conditions, and what was the fault, what really happened, what was the loss occurred, and how many people lost their lives due to this incident. This is what means by a case study. So I'll be just explaining this case study. The MS Estonia was a Roro ferry, which sank on 28 September 1994. Location at the time of incident was Baltic Sea. When MS Estonia was en route from Estonia to Stockholm in Sweden. Stockholm is a place in Sweden. Weather at the time of incident. Wind force seven to eight. It was like a mere storm, like a situation. So statement of facts include: On twentieth September, a heavy wave hitted the bow doors at zero one zero zero hours, but the indicator lights on bridge showed no alarms. In over the next ten to fifteen minutes, the bow doors were separated and torn apart from the hull. means the bow door gone into the sea because of the heavy wave hitting the bow door the ship listed immediately to the starboard heavily this occurred due to the flooding and the list was about 75 degrees to the starboard so this led to rapid sinking of vessel and number of lives lost in this incidents were 800 passengers including crew members Before this, there was an incident of Herald of Free Enterprise. Herald of Free Enterprise was also a Roro ferry, whose gross tonnage was seven nine five one metric ton. The Herald of Free Enterprise just capsized in a few moments after leaving a port in Belgium on sixth March nineteen eighty seven. In this incident, one ninety three people lost their lives. the cause of incident was when the ship departed from the harbor the bow door was not closed so this led to flooding inside the ship which led to capsizing of the ship and hence loss of lives the main cause of this incident was the negligence of bosun at that time bosun who was supposed to supervise and close the door he instead opted to go and sleep in his cabin so such a huge mistake took lives of many people and also caused the loss of ship so in this two incidents you can notice how the bow doors became very dangerous to roro ship so that is why in present days whichever ships builded after 1995 or so or most of the roro ships which does ocean going voyages they will not be fitted with bow doors or bow visors the most stressed part of the ship which faces a lot of stresses or forces from the sea so bow door will obviously is a no match for heavy waves hitting the bow part so that is why in the present era no ships are fitted with bow visors or bow doors it has almost become extinct except in some small vessels or some roro ships because in those smaller roro ships they often do not travel in 
oceans or from country to country this ferry is uh, this bow door is largely helpful for them to load or discharge the cars faster so moving on to the last topic of this video is the hazards and dangers of roro ships obviously each and every type of ship has its disadvantages but the roro ship when compared to other ships has a slightly more disadvantages when it comes to the construction point of view first point is lack of bulk head roro ships are neither divided longitudinally or transversely so when there are no divisions they have low watertight integrity when the flooding takes place the fac created in this large undivided cargo space can result in rapid loss of stability eventually leads to capsizing and this lack of bulkheads can also lead to rapid spreading of fire because no subdivision is there once the fire starts in one end it can spread very fastly along the entire length of the ship and sometimes it becomes impossible to contain the fire many roro ships have also lost their cargo and many roro ships are completely burnt because of fire accidents also second point is improper cargo storage and securing any loose cargo inside a roro ship can give rise to chain reaction which leads to heavy shift in cargo position that can result in listing of ship to probable hull damage and capsizing just like container just like container any one cargo unit inside the roro if it is not properly secured and there is slight rolling and pitching the cargo unit will start to damage the nearby cargo units slowly the extent of this damage will increase as it damages the lashing of the surrounding cargo that leads to a chain reaction causing huge cargo claims third point is freeboard roro vessels have huge freeboards which can result in difficulty to maintain course during beam winds and therefore roro ships experience difficulty in turning when the beam winds are present due to their large freeboard the rolling of the ships also will be increased when beam winds are present fourth point is a location of lsi equipment suppose in an abandoned ship situation in a roro ship obviously the crew will try to use life rafts or life boat to evacuate from the ship but the location of this life boat and life raft in roro ships is very high so it makes it difficult for them to lower them at sea in heavy weather especially and the last point is bridge visibility just like container ships or ships carrying timber cargo roro ship also face similar disadvantages because the freeboard of the roro ship is higher and even the bridge is located in the aft in most of the roro ships this affects the requirement sea room required by the vessel in order to navigate safely in any water we have come to the end of this video i hope that this video is able to help you in understanding about roro ships obviously i'll be making videos on other topics except roro ships but roro ship is one of the topic which mmd surveyors find uh, easier for failing any student who goes for oral examination because most of the students from india or most of the cadets from india are not sailing on roro ships so when you go to oral examination surveyor when he definitely wants you to fail in oral examination and he will start asking you about the roro ship even during my time i also faced the same thing so that is why i am making videos on roro ships because it helps people to pass their exams and helps them understand the topics clearly even myself i did not sail on any roro ship but i am trying to help others in making them understand so that's it guys thank you for watching my video please make sure to like comment and obviously you must subscribe to my channel
if you subscribe that will help me and encourage me to make some more videos or comment the topics below on which i should make videos on i will definitely try to complete it let it be any topic regarding to the deck side if you have found my video interesting and easier for you to understand please subscribe to my youtube channel and uh, thank you for watching until the end bye bye